Welcome to the uh, Design Right Workshop on exploring ideas for imaging, designing, and starting a hypertext exercise. So, um, so that's what we're gonna we're gonna chat about. And um, what I think we should do is just we'll go around. I'm gonna stop my share for a second and um, just go around. And anybody who wants to be able to talk, um, just let's just do a quick test of your microphone. So. Um, and I do that by introducing myself, Steve Schneider. I'm the, I don't know what I am, the thing of design right. And um, I'm going to point to Kira and have Kira introduce herself briefly and point to someone else. Hi, everyone. I'm Kira. Does my mic work? Yep. Good. Point to someone else so that they know that it's their turn to speak. I will point to James. I can't hear James. Yeah, I had to unmute myself. I'm James. I'm the guy that records everything and posts it. James, point to someone. Yes, I will point to Julia. <laughs> I'm Julia. Um, I'm just here to learn. I don't have any functions. Point to Azra. Azra. There you go. Azra, are you there? Hello, I'm here. Okay. And and then that 649, that is? Kia ora, that's me. Uh, this is Higat Demeshev. Okay, good. So okay, we're here. I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah, okay. Uh, I can't that's... see who else is here to point to someone. Sorry, I'm just on the phone. Yes, I, that, that's why we saved you for last. Um, we yeah, could thanks for that. We could compare temperatures, I suspect. I think we were, um, what was I, 22 below, I think. Kira, oh, you... well, we're definitely more than 22 above, that's for sure. <laughs> here, I bet it's you pretty were... hot here. We were minus 21, and then the uh, thermometer said off the scale low, I think. Yeah, okay. Anyways, yeah, my so. wife tells me it's 26 degrees Celsius here. I've got no idea what that is in Fahrenheit at the moment. You know, it's one of those things um, that some people have like a feel for, like the Fahrenheit centigrade difference, and some people don't. And mm. I'm one of those who don't. Um, <laughs> and um, but I, I know how to like write a little macro in Tiddlywiki so that I could just right next to any temperature, just immediately convert it for people to get a different feel, right? Oh, that's cool. It's just like the time zone thing. If you look, you know, the way I've done it, yeah. fine, right? With the time zone, it's like a live link and you can kind of program that. And then you could have a template sitting behind there that would sort of know if the person understood Fahrenheit or Celsius. Mm -hmm. Present the text to them in a way that was suited to the reader. Okay, so that's like a form of hypertext that's, it's programmatic and algorithmic. Um, and it kind of goes to like, you know, those are specific facts, not emotions kind of thing. Mm. I was but actually thinking of putting an iframe on my tiddly wiki to show my current local time to you people so you can see what, yeah, what exactly. time it is here locally. Yeah, so, okay. So what I thought we'd do um, is... Um, kind of go around the horn and um, I did some thinking and about and with James's proposal or concept and Azra's and Kira's and so um, and, and Hagar's but Hagar can't present so that's no but listen in so let's go in my screen we'll go Kira if you want to go first if that's okay you take the screen if that's okay yep and let me full screen you and put you up here. Okay. And um, so if you wouldn't mind just starting in, in, in design, right? Should be in design, right? Yeah, and just at home, just to make sure it's like fresh. Because I never get to see how it works for other people. So hit the home button, how people navigate this. I always assume certain things, you know. Um, so, okay. So there's, um, 
And there's some interesting things that I played around with today. So I thought I'd show you those. So if you click on workshop, no, click on the 15th February, what to do week five. Click on that. I saw this. You've been really busy, haven't you, Steve? I've been playing. It was, it was yeah. like, have, it's not really playing, but there's, there's stuff out there that I try to roll out and have so that when people are beginning to be ready for more things, they've got models in front of them. So you kind of look at stuff. And so you can always look at the code. And that's mm. what's interesting. Um, and so anything that, it, like, if you look, so what you're thinking about here is like, well, what's happening in this text and what's new? And so nothing's really apparent, but open the code. So become a read, when you read the stuff that I write, in effect, you have to edit it or open the code. And why is this slow there? And, and if you, I always close the menu, but I'm having issues with that right now. See what happens when you close the menu. Kira, the, uh, no, it's not way up there. No, way up, yeah, that one. That's interesting. Yours does the same as mine. It doesn't actually maximize the, uh, the story river anymore, does it? No, something happened. I broke something. I don't know what. Yeah, I've done exactly the same with mine as well. Okay, so anyway, so be, if you make your window slightly smaller, it brings it back in. So I broke something. But if you look at the code on the left here, um, see like the things that are in, in, whoops, in curly braces. Wednesday, 10 a.m., Wednesday, 9 a.m., right? You see how the and Zoom rooms in curly braces? Yeah. And so that's a way of writing where that whatever Wednesday at 9 a.m. transcludes, which if you look over there, Wednesday, 9 a.m. transcludes to Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. New York time convert to other time zones. Actually, I think it's including the day of the week, too. Wednesday, comma. So that's like a way of, of writing with transclusions. Um, so when you have text that you reuse, it's helpful to, to do that and, and to begin to think about those things. And then you see that um, up there where I do tag new at design right. Um, yeah, right, exactly, right there. So that's a way, click on the thing, that's a way of building a link to all of those objects. So although the code, the command says tag new at design right, I think the effect is to give the reader the ability to link to those objects, the group of objects, sorted in a particular way. So here a link is a filter plus a sort. So it's a list plus a filter and a sort, right? So that's like, but that's a link. That's not a transclusion. It's not a tag. It's a, so it's the act of me writing bracket bracket tag new at design right is the act of me writing a link. Okay, not tagging. It's using tags, but anyway, so I just wanted to, so as you think about writing, tagging, and transclusion, when you write in curly braces, you're writing with transclusions. When you write with square brackets, you're writing with links. Um, so part of this assignment is to get you to think about that. So, um, so I wanted to model that a little bit, and that's always um, fun. And then see, the other thing I was playing with a little bit, which has nothing to do with hypertext, is trying to name these activities. So the ones in double engaging asynchronously, um, playing, experimenting, engaging synchronous. So naming activities, those things become tags, right? So you begin to think about naming things in, in smaller chunks, maybe, and maybe eventually that will become a tag. So that's a way of, in which hypertext is emergent. And so what you're seeing in the course, the idea of this movie is that the notions of teaching hypertextuality emerge sort of in front of you or in the code that you're reading. So you have to keep looking at stuff. That you think. Um, so I wanted to point that out. So if you could jump to yours. Oh, no, We're, I made a link to yours. Let's make sure that that works, Kira. So could you use my link to get to your work? Which link? Where is it? Yeah, so close this. Just close that tiddler. Yeah. Is your computer really slow of my imagination? Mine uh, looks 
fine from my side. It's just a little slow. Okay, so maybe it's just delayed. And because where you have you been waiting for me to say something? Yeah. Okay, so click on exploring ideas and then click on the um, you know the comments to yours, your post, the link that I made for you, and the um, and the response. I think we had both. I just want to make sure that it works. Where's exploring ideas? Um, it's in the workshop. The, the workshop, Tiddler. The pipe top thing in new design. The top thing right there, workshop, exploring ideas. Yeah. And so what I've done here is um, linked to Kira's and everybody's. And if that doesn't work, let me know. Um, so what's your, what's your concept with hyperplants here, Kira? What is it? What's your concept with hyperplants? Well, I'm going to, uh, well, I've started by making a list of lots of types of plants and I want to organize them by their mostly visual characteristics. So it's, it's a hypermedia guide to wild plants. So, okay. So do you have a, do you have an object model? What do you mean by that? So like, what's your primary object in your wiki? And not primary, but there's different, like, so is a plant an object? Yeah. So you've got uh, a bunch of them listed there, right? Yeah. Okay. And you base this out of that, okay, yeah. So what do you, what do we know about birdweed? Right now? In your, in your wiki, according to your wiki. According to my wiki right now, it just links to Wikipedia. No, 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 no. We know lots more, right? So what do we know? Like what knowledge do you have and what, uh, you know, what links do you have that are related to bindweed? So let's, uh, let's edit your tiddler. And so we know we've got that image there, right? Yep. So that's a little, that's a piece of knowledge that you have gathered and said, oh, this has something to do with bindweed. Right. And I presume the scientific name is Eucalystigia or whatever it is, huh? Oh, I haven't even looked. I'm not reading, right? Yeah, exactly, right? And so you could parse that further if you wanted to, to get the scientific name. But, you know, basically you've got an image. Um, and what's that? You've got a Wikipedia link, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and what else do you have? I have a, a tag here that says flower and it's tagged to hyperplants. Okay, so hyperplants is not something we know about bindweed, right? Well, we know that it belongs to hyperplants in a sense. So I guess that's something we know about bindweed. Okay, and where'd flower come from? It's just a, a tag that's going to be developed. It's not you connected to much else right now. You put it there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm just, I didn't know if it got put there by some, and there's different ways that objects can get tags, right? So you could have, yeah. Um, so, in, yeah. <clears throat> so in this case, you found that picture and you kind of hand built this Hitler, right? That's how I did this one. Yeah. Um, so it's not from IFTTT. I'm sorry? Ift. So it's not come through from Ift? No, no. So or it's from not, Flickr or whatever. <laughs> right. So, but if you stick with um, Bindweed for just a second, because I want to, so imagine that I was looking at this on my phone, which is perfect, right? What would you want me to be able to do as a reader? I want you to be able to access the Hiddlers that are related to bindweed, so the, the plant parts that are uh, bindweed plant parts. 
want you to be able to tell what season is associated which, with each plant part as it looks at that time. And other things that I haven't thought about. Okay. Um, you want me to be able to identify it? To identify it? Like if I looked at it, would you, like if I were to use it, and I could say, oh look, I am in central New York and now I know what this flower is the bindweed. That would be ideal. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. So optimally, you'd be able to search by um, what a plant looked like if you found a plant and you wanted to identify it. If you had fuzzy leaves or a prickly stem or a certain color of flower, you'd be able to search that way as well so you could find your plant. How could you do that now? Right now with this, this wiki? Yeah. Uh, you can't yet. Well, edit the tiddler. Is, what do you know about bindweed? Is it fuzzy? It's not fuzzy, no. Oh, is it smooth? I, I don't know. What do you know about its emotions? <laughs> it's a vine, and it grows on the ground, and it's kind of small. And it has flowers, like that flower. Okay. The new word, I think it's sympetalous. All its petals are one flower. So there's things that you know about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so one of the, in, I mean, building a resource is cool, um, and that's a really good idea, but let's, um, could you build something that was like sort of different off of each of these? Like, so what you just said, you know, you could just type all that you just said, right? Good. It does sound to me like she's done exactly the same as I've done. Uh, where I've gone back to the notes and quotes exercise, she's gone back to the four by four exercise. Sure, which is a good way. But one of the um, um, one of the ideas that you could well, let's think about writing. And so, think about um, could you write a description of bindweed? Yeah. That was. Um, Totally the opposite of creative, but was purely robotic. Okay, so like write a sentence like there under the under the center, you know, all the way on the bottom. In fact, actually put it in a field. Put it in the field called caption. We'll call it caption. And um, write like... Um, Right, um, I don't know, a little sentence, like, I don't know, bindweed is a wonderful plant, <laughs> you know? Um, sure. Um, now, before you add it, when you call things caption, it has certain special characteristics and makes it behave in different ways. So if things are strange, and, you're see and, and basically, when you do a list of this tiddler, it will give you the caption instead of its name. And that's, I have to write about that because I just discovered that by accident when I was playing yesterday and I named things caption and I kept getting them in lists. So it's really interesting. But instead of writing a caption, call it caption X um, and add that. And just add it. So that be, click the add button down there. So that's how you add the value of a field to a tiddler. Okay. And then in your tiddler, to transclude the value of that field. So click after center. Click what? Click in the text box after the close of the center tag. And we're gonna transclude it. So when you hear transclude, you think curly braces. And we're gonna transclude caption X and close it with curly braces, except not, we have to transclude a particular version of caption X, which is the current Tiddler's version of caption X, which is represented by putting two exclamation points in front of the word caption. Pound, pound, yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, now you might think about for your, for your project, you could write a sentence in which 
your tiddlers had the name of the plant in one value, the word wonderful in another value, and the word vine in a third value. And then these sentences would sort of get auto-written. And that's an interesting way of writing. So think about that, something like that. That gives you a way to write. And, um, and then it also gives you a chance to use a template very soon. But you start with, so what you try to do is build like 10 or 12 of these. Don't get like, go, don't go building 100. Because but you're going to have to redo them all three or four times. You know, so you want to build a model. And yeah. so we're looking for like that level of detail yeah, instead of like breath, because it's easy to spin it off and like make it, you know, a thousand plants. So that's pretty cool. Um, does that give you some ideas to play with? Yeah, that's, um, yeah. that sounds fun. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, you can write a sentence just like Caption X, and then you write a sentence like Caption X is, yeah, blip. There you go, pound, pound, blip. Or bang, bang, exclamation points are bangs as well and pipes or vertical bars. Um, so you can write that as a sentence. Um, how would this work across multiple tiddlers? How does this work across multiple tiddlers? Because I'm thinking, I uh, am I just making these fields for this one tiddler? Yes. Hmm. That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Although you can access them from other titlers. You can access the values, but Kira's talking about entering them. Um, yeah. Yes. So close this. Or save this titler. And now um, clone it. You know how to clone? I, I th I'm a little behind you. Yep, I just cloned it. Yeah, so I can't, I don't know, my screen is a little lagging. So you can just clone it, so you can create a dummy one and then clone them repeatedly, and it will have those fields. So what you're doing, it. yeah, so right, so scroll down and the field should be there, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and of course you wouldn't have the values. You could put whatever values in there to create the fields. Um, and there's probably a better way to do that as well, like with a template or something. Um, but cloning works pretty well. And so, um, yeah, what you're, what you're beginning to do then is writing with a template as well as writing with transclusion. Um, and you can, and you'll find that you can access those values, like the value of blip, bring the value you can bring the text blue plant into any tiddler um, by transcluding the tiddler and the specific field of that tiddler and now that creates all sorts of interesting possibilities for writing as well okay so it's um so you begin to see these objects as having different characteristics and values and they drive part of your writing. You can have plants. You might have a whole nother set of objects for um, plant parts, right? Or plant stories, or plant literature, or plant poems. So, um, cool. Well, thanks. Um, did you have more questions or? or um... Um, I don't think yet. I was just trying to okay. figure out my, my hierarchy. It's a little arbitrary. Don't get um. Don't get hung up on hierarchy. Okay. Um. So, but but what you are figuring out is sort of like your um. Your vectors, right? Or your dimensions. My trails. Each, each one like sort of. So when you've got subtype and secondary subtype. This is the same, Julia, this is exactly the same struggle that Avery is having in her project that Julia works with in, in, in doing hierarchies for uh, and tagging things at a hierarchical level. Um, yeah, I, I um, I'll do something with that. Okay. I would go for 
try using color in your tags. So try using the tag manager to color your tags of thing and seeing if you see if you can get them related the um, by color and um, Where's the tag manager? Um, click on control panel or tools. One of the two. Oh, tools in the menu bar. Yeah. Tools. Yeah, it's in the menu bar right there. Tools. Not in the control panel. I was wrong. Right next to recent. There. Found it. That's nice. Yeah. Um, so you can set, and you can do icons as well. Um, I don't know how to do that, but yeah, you, you do it that way. <laughs> I'll tell you what's also a really useful tip is keeping a list of your color codes so that when you're applying the colors on each tiddler, it is consistent throughout. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can just look them up from a list. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good strategy too. I, I, you can see, I, I haven't played much with colors, but um, I have found from time, you'll see a little bit of, I'm doing a little bit of kind of organizing tags by colors, and that helps me sort of keep things straight a little bit. Um, but I'm, I, you could, here you could also search in the, on the World Wide Web <laughs> for Tiddly Wiki hierarchical tagging and see what's out there. I will do that. Um, there's, there's somebody out there who's figured it out. Um, generally, I look at stuff, make sure you're looking at stuff that works in TW5. So anything that's from like, unless you're desperate, don't look at stuff prior to like 2011. It will work, but you know, it takes like a lot of, um, I want to see what you get. I'm so excited. Uh well, anyway, so, um, so Azra, did you want to, um, thanks Kira. Azra, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Did you want to, um, chat about your autobiography? Did you want to show your screen or you're not quite ready for that or? Well, I haven't really done anything yet, to be honest with you. I just explore some ideas. Okay. That's what I um, so I played with an autobiography for you. You did. <laughs> I did. I couldn't resist. I was going to share it, but I didn't really get enough done. But I have enough to share, but not to like share it online. Um, so I'm going to fire you, Kira, <laughs> and start sharing my desktop one. Um, so are you seeing that, my future? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna move this over to that one. Um, so I don't remember where I left off on this. So let's save it. Um, okay, oh, I remember this. It's a little flaky. <clears throat> um, I can't resist, I have to start there. <laughs> so this is, I don't know if anyone got it. Anybody play with pop-up tagger that's, um, I kind of launched that and said you can download it and gave you some instructions to play with it. And this allows you to tag things like objects and to add tags to it, right? So this might be a way of building out a set of tags. And I was just playing with Osra's autobiography. Um, and this demonstrates the use of the TOC, the table of contents. This is the expandable. And then there's um, just the old regular TOC. That looks like that. I'm gonna put a HR between it so you can see the difference. Um, and I'll share this with everybody. Um, so this is like opening and closing. So this is like a way of sort of organizing, this is all from Azra's post, right, of all the things that are in the future. Um, and, the, and you might want, I don't know why it's getting these temp tag groups, I mean, that's a little bug that we'll have to figure out. Um, but the idea was that you'd have this object here, maybe Journey to America, um, 
and maybe you would you could build it this way and maybe um, you have it you know you search for an image Do you have an image for journey to America in I do. I have tons of pictures you do right so you've got tons of pictures right so a little even maybe like like I actually had one on the airport when I was nine <laughs> do you use it on Flickr no I I don't do you have anything online that I could find here um, not a, not online they're old they're old, okay. Yeah. So anyway, if you had a picture on Flickr and you put them on Flickr, mm -hmm. um, on your photo stream, mm -hmm. they're sort of easy to share. And um, mm -hmm. see, I'm, these are the, these. I just I just go out and grab these for like this class. So oh, I don't. Let's see. We want, have you you've seen these all already? You haven't seen this one. Um, but you see that, you see that caption there? Um, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing. I don't, uh, anybody use Flickr? <laughs> anyway, but there's, um, you can get a URL from a picture. Right here, there's a share button, share photo. You get an embed code and you copy. So once it's set up, and I think I've got it set up for small and that's it, right? So I go back to my biography and I paste that code here and call it embed and I add it and it's tag tagged objects um, yeah I'm gonna overwrite that journey to America titler that's fine um, and that's pretty cool right and so then I can say oh well this is part of my um, my past um, but it needs a new tag, so I'm going to edit the new tag, and this is like, um, I don't know, something. So I'll save it. It's in my past. Now I can come back to my past and tag it Journey to America. Okay. And then over time, all of the objects that are tagged Journey to America show up here. You have to do something with it. You have to say, well, give me a list of them or something, right? You have to ask for them, but this becomes a way of organizing your objects. Um, so I don't know what you're, but if you've got lots of pictures, Osra, you could just do a photo essay, right? Well, I, I do have a lot of pictures, but of certain things throughout my life not really when I was little um, yeah it doesn't matter this is just it doesn't have to this is not real this is this is about the writing of the hypertext not the object itself in a, in a way you know it's just like learning to do it um, so are you saying to do the whole the whole thing with pictures or just no, America? Like, so I um I've got this idea 64 is a lot but if you build objects in in um, Sets of objects in like two by two or three by three or four by four or five by five, you know, so 25, so squared basically. They, they take on special characteristics over time and they're interesting to play with. So 64 photographs would be a lot to mess with, but if you were up for it, you could do that. Um, like you pick out 64 pictures. Mm -hmm. um, it's tough to do future, right? So 64 pictures, but you want to think of them a little bit ahead of time, like um, like a third of them from the past, the present, the future, but or three, you know, sets of what's that like 18, 16 sets of 16. Is that right? Yeah, so you want you want to think about them organized in a certain way, okay. um, or you could just pick out. I mean, that would be like a highly directed way. Another way is just pick out 20 pictures, right? Any 20 and put them all up and begin tagging them with what you see in them. Okay. People, places, events, colors, weather, emotions, happiness, sadness, tragedy, nouns, verbs, adjectives, you know, all different, like just, describe the picture as broadly as you can 
and see what that yields for you. See what kind of understanding you can learn from that. Okay. Because you'll click on a tag and you can use this pop-up tagger to bring your pictures in. Right. Is that, is that that list right there the, where you can click on the little scroll down? Yeah, can you share your screen? Um, I don't actually have anything on mine. Let me see. If, do you want me to pull up my Taylor Wiki? No, I want you to pull up mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you see it? Yeah. So pull up the design right. It's the, yeah, that's okay. Uh, ooh. Oh, you had the JSON issue. Did you want to work on that? Yeah, I was going to do that after. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We can do that. So um, under new with design right, see the fourth bullet down announcing pop-up tagger. I'm sorry. You should have, you should have broken in the beginning. I forgot about that. Yep. Click that's on that. And um, then you click on how to get and use the pop-up tagger tool. This one? Yep. And um, scroll down and there's implementation. You have to make a copy of that's the hardest thing. So what are you in Firefox or Firefox. Chrome? So if you click on that checkbox, let me see if this works. See where it says click save and rename that little checkbox there? Yeah, that's too subtle, way too subtle. <laughs> and it didn't work. Try it again. Damn. Can you do a file save as? For? Right here in this wiki. File save as? Yeah, save page as. Okay, and then not web page complete. But do a pull down. And it's web page HTML only. And rename it from empty pop-up tagger to Osra pop-up tagger. Yeah, and it's good to, yeah, you don't want, no, that's perfect. And save it. To Dropbox? Yeah, that's where all your, yeah, definitely to Dropbox. And now open it. Yeah, and okay. Okay, so now we'll save. So you can build your project in here and you can follow all those implementation instructions, scroll down. So you, now everything's right here, you know, so you don't have to save it. You've done the first step and then you've got everything's in here. You've got the demo object. So click on the two cows standing in the sun. Yeah, so it's supposed to sort of teach you this and you can, you can delete all of my tags and still have your stuff in there or just leave the, you know, it'll teach you to, to modify it for your own purposes. So I can change things and not mess with your tiddly wiki? Exactly. Okay. And when it doesn't work, go up to the top and get it again <laughs> and start over. Right. That's how you play. So yeah, that's, that's, this is the first one I've done in this class this way that like, okay, play with this. But I think, you know, people are ready to sort of move on and play with that. So um, if you go up to the top, I'll show you how to implement it. Um, it's actually not too tough. Um, so there's a link down, scroll down a little bit. Um, Pop-up tagger control page. Yeah, and this is like, this is, I didn't build this, but this is okay, it's what it is. So, um, so if you scroll down, um, that's where you choose what's gonna be, what you're gonna tag it with. Now in your case, you're gonna tag it with like, 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 something different, like my present, my past, my future, right? Yeah. So if you type in tagging in your present right there. Right there. To type what? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Type the tag name. Like tag name. Right, right up a little right there, yeah. yeah. What am I typing? I don't know. What, what, what I passed. And add. And add. Okay. Okay. So now scroll up. Scroll up. Now we're picking up some echo now. Scroll up a little bit and click that proceed button up there that one. click proceed and now it's there 
and now close and click click on two cows standing in the sun my demo object it's in your list of tiddlers on the right right there um, and now you'll notice that um, my past is listed there okay. do you see in the pull down there's the my past yeah under, right and there's nothing under it because you haven't built any tags to it so click new tag and click that little pencil to the left that and what's your first let's call it journey to america and save the tiddler and close the tiddler and keep closing because we're going to come back down to two cows standing in the sun eventually keep closing okay. yep close that too yep okay and now click on my pass and you can tag it to journey to america so click journey to america you have to click the little checkbox. there you go and so that's instead of having to edit it and type the tags in there you sort of organize them and it's a way of you can build this organization in later or you can develop it on the fly. So once you begin to once you begin to have it, you create this little structure if you'd like. Or you just open it up and tag them in a very open-ended way. Okay. Okay. And did you do you remember how to do the add an object? Click click on that new journal tiddler icon. It's a new one. It's the little tag with the date on it in the main toolbar. It's um behind the talking window. No, it's, it's uh, over in, uh, in the main toolbar. There, that you're right there, right in the, yep, up. The main, yeah, the set of tools, it's the new one you haven't seen before. It's the, one? that one. <laughs> Create a new journal, Tiddler. Click on that, okay? And um, um, go to, um, go to Flickr. Up here? Yeah. And um, just explore anything. Mm. Yeah, and so pick one of those and share it. Sorry, I'm not. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and embed it. Do choose the embed in the middle, yeah. And um, now nah, it's too big, make it smaller. Yeah, that's pretty big, too. Think about your phone, yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> and um, okay, and now grab that code, copy that, and close it, yeah, and paste that down in the field value. Call it embed and um, give it a name up there in the object description. Mm, okay. Way up there in the name of the tiddler. Yeah, get rid of object description. That, by the way, that's the date and time that you're putting it in. So that way, if you put two things in that are called pretty picture, they'll be distinguished and they'll be unique and they won't write themselves over. So you might want to leave the data in there or you might not. It's up to you. Sure. So it unique, it guarantees a unique tiddler name. Yeah, so that's good if you're gonna have like nature and save it. Um, and so that's kind of cool. That's not bad, right? No. Yeah, and you'll, have, and you'll be able to do a lot with it um, and to sort of write about picture. So um, if you put a caption, you can add a caption. Um, I think if you type in a caption, I think it goes right to the bottom. If I do it here? Yeah, type caption and give it a, yeah. You know, a good way to, to, um, to debug your stuff when you're starting is write, this is the caption. Is this okay? Yeah, but if you're, but yeah, I was just suggesting, if you write, this is the caption, then you'll really know what you're seeing. Just, just a way of debugging. Um, yeah, you have to add it and then you save the tiddler. Don't I have to do the, the... No, 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 no. Add it um, and save the tiddler. Oh, yeah. Okay. So why is that working? 
click on tagged objects, the tag, and go to that tiddler, tagged objects, and there's nothing there, but notice it's tagged to a template. Uh -huh. So edit this tiddler, and every tiddler that's tagged with tagged objects gets pushed through this filter, this template. And it says, okay, display my caption, and then a break, and then display the value of my embed code, and display the value of my field called IMGLOC, okay, which is a non-documented feature of this thing. So what it's doing, and this is related to what Kira was talking about here, this is how you, um, you can build a template called plants, and then every plant, this is where you control the display characteristics of what the plant objects look like. Um, and then your content is in the plant objects themselves. And you can take the same content, run it through different templates and get totally different results if you choose to. Um, do, do you see how that's working, Azra? That's, that's kind of cool, I hope. Um, it's confusing, but you think about the power it gives you as a writer, okay? And the responsibilities it gives you as a writer. So because your, your readers are going to be engaging and interacting with your text. So not only do you have to move them along sequentially, word after word after word, sentence after sentence, paragraph after paragraph, but you have to be conscious of what they're seeing and where they might want to go from there. Um, okay. And especially if they're, your readers are looking at a photo essay, <laughs> you know? Think about the stuff on your phone that you flip past, right? When you're just flipping past photos. Right. You could write this in Tiddlywiki. In fact, you're going to. Because <laughs> um, look at, you know, start looking at your wikis on your phone. And it's, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> you know, you, you, can, you get rid of the menu and you're basically just flipping around. So in your case, Osra, we might be able to take a journey. Um, I have to look at my phone because I've lost the time. We might be able to take a journey through your life um, through these pictures, right? Mm -hmm. And you might have a sequence of them. You might think of them as one sequence, like maybe chronological. Right. What, uh, what would other sequences be? Uh, topics. Topical, sure. Um, emotions. Um, People, um, places, geographic places on an arc of geography, um, intimacy, sort of like how close people are to you within your family circles, you know, so the furthest away and moving in, um, mm -hmm. or, or some sort of a, um, like a, um, a density score, you know, like how much, if there are pictures of people, how much time you spent with them from the least amount of time in your life to the most, all those people. So there's all sorts of different ways and orders that people can sequence or just on the words that you provide. Um, so this is, this is intended if, if you want to approach an autobiography this way as a photo essay. Um, your writing is in those captions. So you might want to think about those as write something. You can write a couple of sentences in there and then that becomes your story. So as we, you know, my, my, you've got the title, my two cows standing in the sun, or you can sort of hide the title and use the caption. You know, and so you've got two places, two different things that you can um, use as your fields, or you can create other fields as well. Um, so does that make, does that give you an idea of sort of how to go about doing this? Yeah, I think once I start playing around with it, read a little more about this, I'll get it more. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, and don't, you know, if you play with it, um, so you know how to you, you, uh, save this. You know how to save this on Dropbox, right? Or share this on Dropbox? Yeah, don't I have to go into Chrome? No, so the easy way here, do you have the Dropbox, um, the Dropbox pulled it? Yeah, save that, save your Tiddler, save your Wiki. Do you have the Dropbox pull down now? 
you know, up in the big the drop. I don't see where it is. Um, I think you're on full screen in your browser or something. Um, I can't see. It looks like you only shared your browser, so I can't see your uh, operating system. New share. I'm on the whole desktop. Share. Oh, okay. Um, where's your Dropbox? Up here. There it is. Yeah. So share link on Azra pop up Kagger and go to design right and type in the search box. Uh, I think it's Dropbox or Jen. Yeah, Jen. Right. right. You've done this, right? Drop. Yeah. Um, yeah, or you can just click open. <laughs> yeah, and so that's the one that you can share that in the news group if you've got questions and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay, so you do a perm review from a specific tiddler and say, hey, I'm trying to do this in my tiddler with okay. the permalink. Anybody figure out what's wrong? Okay. And then I will try to do it. <laughs> okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was great. Thanks. That was